This week on Maker Update, acoustic levitation, an Arduino made by Sony, a new kit by Anouk Whiprecht, self-centering drill bits, and turning old monitors into a video wall. It's Wednesday, August 16th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. How are you guys doing? I'm excited. I've got a road trip planned at the end of this month, going up to Portland, Seattle, and Bend, Oregon. Gonna take the band up, do some shows. While I'm up there though, I'm looking for cool maker related stuff to check out. So if you have any ideas for me on maker spaces, maker businesses, cool stuff I should see, let me know in the comments, all right? I'm looking for ideas. And that's it. Um, let's get on with the show, starting with the advanced project of the week. Check out this acoustic levitation device that allows small pebbles or drops of liquid to hover in midair. The project is by Ossier Marzo. It uses an Arduino Nano, a motor driver board, and an array of 72 small 42 kilohertz transducers, which here are acting as basically tiny high frequency speakers. Ossier includes 3D printable files for the structure that the speakers fit into. And most of this project really comes down to verifying the polarity of each of the 72 transducers and then placing them and wiring them into the structure. But once you have it all wired up and the included code loaded into the Arduino, the effect is like magic. You're using the air pressure of sound waves to trap and levitate solid objects. How cool is that? I'm a sucker for any project that gives you a superpower, and I feel like this definitely fits the bill. Uh, I also think it would be a slam dunk project for a science fair project. Like, who else is going to have a levitation device for their science fair project? Uh, I would worry though that the high frequencies might drive your dogs crazy. You generally drive any neighborhood pets into a murderous rage, so fair warning. And now for some news. A few weeks back at Maker Fair Tokyo, it turns out that Sony quietly announced their own Arduino compatible development board. It's called Spritzer. It's due out in early 2018 with no pricing yet and it looks and functions just like an Arduino. This particular board is tricked out with an ARM Cortex M4 processor and built-in GPS. And because it's Sony, there's a deliberate emphasis on audio. It includes a built-in amplifier, eight channel digital mic input, and four channel analog mic input. What does it all mean? Well, Sony's pitching it as an IoT development platform. Considering how well that worked out for Intel, I wouldn't make much of this, but I still think it's interesting when a big company like this jumps into the maker market. Time for one more project. This one comes from Maker Megastar Anouk Whiprecht. It's an open source kit for a wearable, dark detecting, blinking LED board. Using a photoresistor, the board detects when it's in the dark and animates the white LEDs for a sparkling effect. She calls it a high-tech Edelweiss, which is sort of a fluffy white flower. To get the look and to diffuse the LEDs, she 3D printed a frosted white enclosure for the board. What's cool is, if you have access to a 3D printer and a PCB mill, all of the files are here to recreate her entire design. But if you don't, she includes links to quickly order the 3D print from Shapeways and the board and components from a European prototyping company called Eisler. The only tricky part to the build is programming the ATtiny microcontroller. To do that, you're gonna need to set up an Arduino Uno as an in-system programmer, or ISP, a new concludes a link to a separate tutorial on how to do this, and it doesn't look too tricky, but it may be daunting for a real beginner. For this week's Cool Tools review, we're going to take a look at a self-centering drill bit set from Bosch. They're great for makers and for DIY home repairs, and I wish I bought these years ago. If you want this exact same set, using the Amazon link in the show notes takes you right to it, and if you buy them, it helps out my show and the Cool Tools blog. If you've ever tried to attach some pre-drilled piece of hardware to something, a hinge, a latch, a coat hook, you're probably familiar with the challenge of placing the hardware, marking where the holes need to be, and then carefully drilling right in the middle. But if your pilot holes are just a little off, even in just one hole, the whole placement of the hardware will shift and it bugs the crap out of me. A self-centering drill bit makes this process foolproof. The bit has a spring-loaded collar that sits into the hardware you're attaching and keeps the drill bit dead center. So long as your hardware doesn't shift, the holes will be perfectly center. This set from Bosch comes with three common bit sizes, a number six, number eight, and number 10. 
They're also a quick change design that can drop into an impact driver, making it easy to drill and screw with the same tool. I will say that if you're only using this occasionally, you could spend less and just get the smallest size. This will give you a centered pilot hole that you can expand with any regular drill bit. That said, for bigger projects, having the right size bit keeps you from having to drill the same hole twice. So that's the deal with self-centering drill bits. A link to this set from Bosch is in the video description. And remember, you can see thousands of reader recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. I have one other tip to share with you this week, but it's super cool. On the Raspberry Pi blog, I found out about this Pi software called InfoBeamer that allows you to play a single video across a mix of screens. It's essentially video wall software, but built specifically for Raspberry Pi. So let's say you have a bunch of scavenge video monitors of different brands and sizes. You connect each up to a separate Raspberry Pi, each one running the InfoBeamer Magic Wall software, and each display has its own unique QR type code. You take a picture of the arrangement on your phone and the software optimizes the grouping into one giant screen with video playback over local network. The only drawback I see is that the screen grouping magic takes advantage of hosted software that you have to pay a little to access as you need it. It's not much and it's probably worth every penny if you have a need for it, but it's not free from what I can tell. Maker Fairs, we have three this weekend, including Izmir, Turkey, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Chicago Southland. If you're near one, go check it out. And that's it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what I should be checking out in the Northwest on my little road trip. And uh, you probably already know this, but everything I've talked about in this video, just to be clear, is linked to in the video description below. So you can check out anything you're interested in. I also have an extended version of these show notes over on my site, makerprojectlab.com. Over there, you can also sign up on the weekly email list where you'll get notified every time I have one of these maker updates. Plus, you get some few extra links that will surprise and delight you. All right? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.